I hope all of you guys are enjoying your football today. By the time you watch this video, you probably have already watched Tottenham versus Aston Villa, Man City versus West Ham. But you and I both know that the biggest game of the weekend is Chelsea versus Man United. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm extremely excited about this game. I'm, I'm really confident in this game. I'm, and I'm going to tell you why, but, but before we get straight into the video, I will ask that you like, share, subscribe if you're new and on. To the video so how should we do this here should i go over lampard's press conference first go over team news all right so here's how we're going to do this video i'm going to go over lampard's press conference my my thoughts on it team news my predicted lineup and the lineup i would go with and starting off with lampard's press conference has anyone else noticed that lamps constantly refers to himself as manager not first team head coach i thought that was pretty interesting and yes, there is a difference between a manager and a first team head coach. I'm really not going to discuss everything he, he talked about, but I'm going to focus on one quote from the press conference. And that is this, his response to David Luiz. And I just have to say, man, listen, listening to Lampard talk, I mean, the guy is just articulate, man. He's very smart with his words. You know what I mean? I mean, there's a lot, if you watch the interview, you realize how very intellectual this guy is and, and how he uses his words carefully. I mean, the way he's handled this situation is, is phenomenal. Top class, right? But I want to focus on this quote right here. He says, when asked about David Luiz, yeah, well, obviously David has left and gone to Arsenal. We all know that now. We've had some conversations over the last week, honest conversations, because I know David well. And I think the conclusion of that was that he had moved on. So, and watch his facial expression when he, after he says that. He's like, I get uh, all right then. I think it's pretty clear in those terms. It's an area of the pitch where I have competition. There's going to be competition through the year, and people will be needing to make that shirt their own. And I don't have ones and twos and threes in my line. I have people competing for the position. I don't have a set in my mind, and that's what everyone has to understand. So what he's saying here is nothing's given. Everything is based off merit, whether you're the, the 25th man on the roster or the first man on the roster. Whether you're 32 years of age, whether you're 16, 17, or, or 18 of age, it doesn't matter. If you train hard enough, if you've earned it, everything is based off merit. So performing and training. If you're constantly, if you're giving it your all during training, during the games, during the warm-ups, everything, you're going to get playing time, you're going to be picked, and everything is based off merit. It's not by the name on your shirt. Who is willing to not literally, but figuratively die for the badge, right? Leave your heart and soul for the shirt and for the badge. And that is music to my ears, man. Hearing a Chelsea manager say that is is so, you know, refreshing, man. Like it's, it's just so, it's music to my ears, bro. Like, honestly, Lampard is, is fantastic with, with dealing with media. And, and and talking, you know, that right there to me was the highlight of the of the interview. But moving on to a bit of team news, Kante is fit. Whether or not he gets a thumbs up from Lamps, that's yet to be seen. But still, great news. William has been working on his fitness, so he's he's soon to return. Rudiger Hudson-Odoi has doing more and more continued individual training, but they're pushing and striving for a return. Hudson-Odoi posted this on his Instagram. And he said, I know, excuse the crack iPod, I cracked it yesterday. I'm so, so upset about that. But um, I don't know if you can see it or not. But basically, the caption says, I'm back with, with, a, with a tongue out emoji. So, you know, hey, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Hey, it's time to get hyped, man. Honestly, his return has been, fan I mean, it's, it's remarkable, bro. I, I can't believe how fast he's recovered or appears to be, you know, fully, not fully fit, but getting fit and, you know, it's it's really remarkable. He's going to be an absolute boost to not only our morale, but our play on the field. I can't wait for him to return. He's going to be fantastic under Lampard. And, <sighs> hey, shh, let's, let's keep quiet, man. Let's keep the hype train down because, you know, everybody, we have low expectations, right? Not according to Lampard because his answers to that also was fantastic. He kind of switched. He kind of flip the pressure on, on Solskjaer as opposed to himself. The way he said it and, and, and chose his words carefully, hey, the guy is a genius, bro. He's a master of the tongue. So, um, but yeah, 
my should I give my predicted lineup or should I give my lineup that I would go with? I think I think I'm gonna go with my lineup that I would go with because why not? Um, obviously, Kepa is in goal. The guy is gonna be, in my opinion, he's probably gonna be the best keeper in the league this season. He's gonna make that leap. He's he's a fantastic keeper. Money well spent. He showed it in the penalty shootout against Frankfurt. I mean, the guy's fantastic. I know I, that this joke, that that joke about him being the manager, Kepa the manager, that, that that joke is so played out. I'm tired of seeing it, bro. Like, okay, move on, man. It happened. It happened. But um, the guy was worth every every penny, bro. He penalties. He he's a good shot stopper. He he's a massive upgrade from that snake Courtois. So, my back four that I will go with is Aspilicueta, right back, obviously, until Reese James comes back. Christensen and Zuma as the two center backs. I know Christensen has been a bit shaky, but I, I trust in his abilities. I think he will do a job against United as the as he gets, like I said, man, he needs a run of games to get his confidence. And, you know, I'm telling you, the guy's is he's, he's world class, man. He... He's not a defender that's the fastest, that's going to win every challenge, but I like his, his tactical awareness, his ability to read, to sense danger. It's, it's, it's world class, man. I'm telling you, the guy's great. And Zuma is Zuma. He's a tank. He's strong in the air. He wins challenges, wins tackles. He's very physical, and he has nice recovery speed. And, you know, I, I really do like Zuma. I think he's going to be the next captain. If you were to ask me who's going to be the co-captain or the next captain, I think it's going to be Zuma. I mean, we've seen him captain the team against, uh, it was one preseason game, I can't remember, it might have been against Salzburg, or whatever, he wore, he wore, he wore the armband, so, and Mourinho himself said he, he's a young John Terry, so I, I, a lot of managers are speaking highly about, you know, his character, so I, I really, I am really am pushing for that, hopefully, you know, he could be more vocal since David Luiz has left, and he was more of a leader back in the back, and the most vocal, so maybe Zuma could step up and, and, and do that, but, who I would have at left back, I mean, is it really that much of a question? It's, it's, it's Emerson, Emerson Paul Mary. You know, I know if, no nothing against Alonzo. You know, it's a clean slit on the Lampard, but right now Emerson is playing his best football, and he, he's the better choice left back. And you know, fair play to Lampard. He he's gonna make that decision. Hopefully, he makes that decision. The team sheet isn't out yet, but hopefully, you know, Emerson. I expect Emerson to be at the left back position. Now, this is going to be a bit controversial. I know that this is probably going to, you know, make a lot of people upset. But my midfield, the pivot midfield is Jorginho and Kovacic. I say that to say this. Jorginho and Kovacic have played the most minutes on the preseason. They've had a bit of understanding with one another. And, you know, Kante is coming off a knee injury. We don't need him. We don't need to rush him back for a game against United. I'm more... Focus on the Super Cup. I want to win the Super Cup against Liverpool. So if Kante starts today, I don't expect him to play or feature much in the in the Liverpool game. You know, I want to preserve him for that game specifically. You know, because that will be some silverware that we can have, and I think that will alleviate a lot of pressure that we will have coming in this coming season. We'll have a trophy already won, and that'll be fantastic for us. So I want Kante. To you know, if he if he does feature, which I, if he does feature, I expect him to come in the second half when the game is slowed down a bit, when we probably possibly get the goals that we need, and we try to be more defensive because we're going to be at Old Trafford and it's going to be loud and ruckus, and we're going to need Kante to bring some composure in that midfield and in, in our back line. So I would like to see us go out and attack and attack and get the goals early on, and then bring Kante in around the 65th, 70th minute. Giving him about giving him about twenty minutes to come on and and you know get his legs his match fitness legs, so that's what I would go with. That's why Jorginho and Kovacic are are the two midfielders that I would go in the pivot with. And this is key for me. I want Pulisic, I want Pulisic to be as a, the left attacking mid on the left hand side because I think I think he will win the battle against Juan Basaka out there on the wings. If you put Pedro or William or whoever's going to play on the left hand side. I think Pulisic is a better choice because he's going to get past Juan Bissaka a few times, and we need that. We need to stretch Man United as much as possible. With Harry Maguire possibly starting for them as well, that's going to be key. That's going to be tough. So, obviously, I would have Pulisic at the left attacking mid, right? 
They can interchange and put the right and the, and the left if they want to. Ross Barkley as the cam. Yes, Ross Barkley. And on the right hand side, Mason Mount. Those are my. Those are the players I would start every single game if I had a choice. Right. Those are pretty much my starting eleven. And Tammy Abraham up top, and I'll tell you why in a bit. But Ross Barkley, hopefully. He has flipped the switch because in preseason he was by far, if not our top three or top two players in the in the preseason, he was the best player in the preseason, the most improved in that preseason. He really impressed, and I do like him in that position where he's not he's not a number eight. He can just focus on the attack. This system has created a lot of a lot of you know space for Ross Barkley to work with, and I like that. So I would have. Him, Barkley starting, and I, and I can't leave Mason Mount out of, out, of the, out of the team. I just can't, you know. So I put I took Pedro out, and I put Mason Mount as the right attacking mid. And him and Pulisic can interchange because Mason Mount is a workhorse, man. He's going to be all over the pitch. So, you know, it doesn't matter with me. They can swap out, you know, take turns going to uh, Luke Shaw and Juan, Juan Masaka. Take turns, man. But the reason why I picked Tammy Abraham is his movement. You know, his movement, he doesn't have to score goals to, you know, influence the game. His movement allows for Mason Mount to make those late man runs inside the box. It take, He pulls defenders away from certain areas so that it gives more players like Ross Barkley to, to more space to work with and operate with. And that's, that's great for us. I like Tammy's ability to link up with his teammates. Him and Mason Mount seem to have a great chemistry. Um, so, you know, yes, that's the player I will go with to start against United because because I think he's crucial to Lampard's system. He does need to be a bit more clinical. He does need to work on that, but I think that will come as he get a good run of games, as he gets his, his legs. You know, uh, he should have his legs by now. Everybody should be fit, but the first game of the season is always pretty much the worst game of the season. You know, you kind of build on each performance. That's how it goes. So, you know, hopefully we can get an early goal or two. Hopefully we can get a goal or two early on, and second half we can kind of try to preserve a clean sheet, preserve an energy, preserve our energy, energy. And what I'm going with a score prediction that I will go with is I said it earlier, a three-one Chelsea. If not three-one, then two-nil. But I don't think we'll keep a clean sheet, so uh, I'm going three-one. I'm really confident in how we can play and how we're going to play because. Besides Pogba, I don't. The Man United midfield is 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 crap, right? Shite. I'm really not worried about midfield. The midfield area. I think we can really boss the midfield and control the game, and we're going to create chances. You know, we're going to create chances because of our 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 possession and our high pressing. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, so that that's going to be key. I think I think we can beat Matamane and Pogba in the midfield and and really control the game. So I'm really banking on that for us to to be the difference because defensively I think both teams are kind of the same you know we have some weaknesses but I think we're I think we're pretty evenly matched so I wouldn't be surprised if it's a draw or if Man United snuck a victory Chelsea are undefeated in their last 11 games or they've they've we've never lost on a Sunday opener so hopefully we can continue that record and and push through right because this would be massive Mess of three points for Lampard, and and we can build on from here. But my predicted 11 just going to be real quick. I think that Lampard is going with Kante, Jorginho as the two pivots. I kind of went backwards here, but that, that, that's the midfield. And with the back four, it's going to be Aspilicueta, Christensen, Zuma, and Emerson. The midfield three being Pulisic, Barkley, and Pedro. And I think that he's going to go with... Tammy Abraham up top. So leave me your comments down below. How do you feel about this game? What are your score predictions? Um, I'm excited. I'm going to be watching some Man City, some some Aston Villa. I, I really do think before during the recording of this video, this is before the Aston Villa game. I think Aston Villa is going to give Tottenham a hard time. I think they can sneak a victory. I'm really I'm really looking forward to seeing how these championship recently promoted teams perform under under performing in the Premier League. We've seen Liverpool Liverpool destroy Norwich and everybody's already saying Norwich is going down. I've seen some bright spots from Norwich City. You know, they they, they were um, 
last season they were getting compared to sorry ball the way that they were playing in the championship and yeah that's a different level but i think you know when they play teams on their level they would be more productive because they, they created chances they just couldn't finish them and um you know <sighs> preview to the liverpool game i got some reasons that i think that we can beat liverpool anyways up the chills and i'm out. also nathan ake that's all i'm gonna say